Hello everyone, welcome to another video where I'm going to be working in my moleskin sketchbook and this is something I've started doing. You may have seen my first video the other day. Um, I enjoyed it so much and a lot of you seem to enjoy it too. So I thought that this time, um, instead of randomly mark making and just experimenting with um, a variety of materials, that this time I will use um, a set of nine Polychromos um, pencils by Faber-Castell. So there you go, you can see the colours there. Um, yeah, these were just pencils I bought individually. I just picked the colours I really, really liked. So if you'd like to draw along with me, pause this video now, go and get yourself a cup of tea or whatever you prefer, grab your sketchbook and your drawing materials and come back and we will just draw together for maybe 20 minutes or so until I have just filled this page with something. There's no objective to this. I don't know what I'm going to be drawing. This exercise is just so that I can um, try out these coloured pencils and have a little bit of fun with them. So I think the colour I'm going to start with is this. This is one of my favourites. It's called Light Flesh, but um, I think a more appropriate name would be, say, Pale Apricot. I think that's a really lovely colour, sort of a peachy, pinky colour. So we're going to start with that. And I think I'm going to start by just lightly drawing a lovely arcing kind of almost like almost like a rainbow really and I'm just trying to get a feel for these colored pencils because those of you who follow me will know that I am not a colored pencil artist um, in fact, I don't really do much drawing at all, usually. I'm actually a painter. Uh, I work in watercolour and gouache on paper, and I work on acrylic, or rather in acrylic, on canvas. So I don't really do very much in the way of drawing other than to just plan out my paintings and I tend to plan those out not in a sketchbook but on the paper or the canvas that I'll be working on and I only ever really do a very loose sketch. I hope I'm not rocking the table too much when I'm doing this. I noticed in my first video if I really scribbled on the page, it would rock the table, which in turn rocks the camera, which is mounted overhead on a little device that's attached to the table. Um, yeah, I've noticed that I kind of quite like doing these, these arc shapes. Um, right, I'm going to go for this pencil now. This is cinnamon, and it's a slightly darker version, really, of the one I've just used. So let's just fill this in. One thing I'd like to know is how you get a better point on the pencil. Um, I did sharpen these not that long ago, but for some reason I seem unable. I don't know whether you can see this clearly. I mean, it has quite a good point, but that it's quite thick and I would actually like a really fine point to be able to get some good details at some point. I mean, at the moment, I'm just practicing anything to get a feel for these pencils. Uh, I have actually ordered from Jackson's Art um, a whole array of gorgeous coloured pencils. Um, the ones that are coming are Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. 
Um, I've never tried them before, but they have been recommended and I'm very excited to see what they feel like to draw with. Sorry, I'm just blowing away the little dusty bits that are coming off the pencil. Right, and now I'm gonna go for this lovely sort of maroon color. That is a beautiful color. Yes, yeah, so I should have more pencils and other drawing materials as well at my disposal soon, so we'll actually be able to experiment more with different things and this will be very exciting because you're going to come on the journey with me. <laughs> You'll watch me as I use them for the first time. I mean, I don't know where all of this is going to take me. Um, I suppose I should recap, really, and kind of tell you a little bit about um, my history with sketchbooks, <laughs> which is practically non-existent. I mean, I used to sketch a little bit in my teens, um, and I kept a couple of sketchbooks then, just kind of randomly. I didn't really... Um, I wasn't like a regular sketchbooker but I would draw in them now and again and I quite enjoyed it but when I took up painting I just wanted to paint really I didn't I don't know it sounds really weird but I didn't really see the point in drawing other than to get <laughs> to the end result of painting if that makes sense so it was like um I would only draw if I were planning out the painting. I didn't just draw for fun. Um, what colour should we go for next? Um, I mean, the other day when I was playing around, I was doing like these little kind of seed shapes. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them anyway. Um, I thought they looked rather nice. Just kind of little organic shapes here. Basically, I just want to do whatever I feel like at the time and whatever is is kind of pleasing to look at or pleasing to do. Anyway, what was I saying about the sketchbooks? Yeah, I never really kept a sketchbook and I was... Um, I was much more into painting and just the end time I would really draw is to plan out the painting and that has kind of stayed with me. Um, I think I said in the first video I keep a notebook rather than a sketchbook so I tend to write things down in words and sentences. Um, different things, different ideas that come into my mind I'll write them down and I will refer back to my notebooks quite a lot. Um, and I may do a thumbnail sketch now and again, but I never really sketch or draw properly um, or in any real detail. And I actually think that this is going to be something that's going to be so good for me if I can get into this. Because not only am I finding it, <laughs> the limited amount of time I've been spending doing it so far, very relaxing and really enjoyable. But I'm, I'm discovering a love of different materials and this is just, I mean this is going to be interesting I think for my work because it would be nice to um, kind of use mixed media now and again and be able to layer, say for example, I like the idea of doing washes of say watercolour or gouache and and then using coloured pencil or um, neo-colour crayons over the top. Um, I want to see the different textures I can get and the different um, patterns and marks. I think it, I don't know, I just think it's going to add a new dimension. And so what I'm doing with these kind of little exercises is I'm just getting a feel for the 
the different um, drawing materials. So in my other video I was using um, like a felt pen and some paint pens and some sharpies, um, a fountain pen and just a normal graphite pencil. Um, and this time I'm obviously just going to use these coloured pencils in this kind of limited palette just as a little exercise to see what I can do with them. And all the while I'm using them, I'm obviously getting more of a, a feel for them. I think now I'm going to add, actually let's use this dark sepia pencil and just add some lines because I discovered the other day that I really like <laughs> drawing lines. I'm not being as wild as I was the other day. I mean, the exercise the other day was just to kind of fill two pages and go completely crazy. Whereas now I feel like I'm kind of being <laughs> quite careful with what I'm doing. but. I just want to see what I can do with these and just have fun doing it. Now what do we want to do next? I think we'll get this one. It's kind of mid-grey colour and I'm going to do something like I did the other day but I want to just try and do these strokes going at a kind of diagonal angle here and then I went the other way like this. Oh, I thought it looked quite interesting. I mean, I'm imagining, I don't know, those of you, some of you will know my work and some of you obviously won't if you're, if you found me through this video, but I'm imagining some of my little birds with like coloured pencil texture and detailing over the top, like on their wings, for example. I think this could look really lovely. Okay, I'm gonna just go with this lighter grey and um, just to see whether that shows up. Yeah, it does if I, if I push down firmly. There's something rather nice about that. I think I'm probably going to use this in a piece of work. I mean, I guess you could say these are abstract works, but I'm really just testing out the materials and seeing what I can do with them. Right, what haven't we used? We haven't used the green yet, have we? So let's add some green. What can we do with the green? I'm just going to add some little dashes. Almost like little raindrops in here. I have to say, I'm really looking forward to getting my um, blue pencils. <laughs> I think I've ordered some blues. Do you know, every time I put in an art order, just lately, art supplies order, I, I, I press send and, um, and then I realise that I didn't get something and so <laughs> like, I need to put in another order for the things that I forgot about. It's just, it's a pain, it would be really good if I had like an art shop up the road and could just pop in. but have to do it online. Should we continue those little raindrops down here? I think we should. 
I think they could look good. Um, so yeah, I might have to put, um, or place another order so that I can get the things I missed last time. I'm trying to remember everything I need. It's because I'm ordering things I wouldn't normally order. Anyway, I'm going to be doing an art haul video very soon and I'm going to show you all of the different things I have recently purchased from Jackson's Art Supplies and I also have um, a video coming up where I show you what I bought from um, a lovely shop in London. I bought them online, I didn't go into London, um, called Choosing Keeping. Um, I only recently found out about this shop and they do the most amazing array of unusual uh, stationery and art materials. And I decided to treat myself because I recently um, reached 100,000 followers on my Instagram account. And um, I was, <laughs> I mean, it's been years, it's taken me years to actually to get there. But I mean, it's quite something and I'm still, I think I'm still in a bit of shock about it actually, because <laughs> it's such a huge number and I can't quite believe it. But um, yeah, I'm actually now 103,000. So I only reached 100,000. I don't know when it was now, was it a couple of weeks ago? Something like that. And it took me, you know, uh, quite a while to get from I, I remember being kind of stuck on 97 98,000 for quite a while and then suddenly I managed to get to a hundred thousand and because I was featured on one of the art accounts on Instagram the other day loads of new follows came from that so I've whizzed up to a hundred and three thousand and I haven't had a chance to do my giveaway because I'm going to be giving away a piece of original artwork, probably one of my painted stones with the birds on. Um, I'm going to be doing that to celebrate, obviously reaching 100k, something for my followers. Um, so I still need to do that. So if you'd like to follow me on there, if you're not already, I'm at Natasha Newton Art. You can find me quite easily. And then you can have a chance of winning some original artwork. But um, yeah, so what was I saying? My point was <laughs> that um, I thought it would be nice to actually do something for myself to celebrate as well because so often we don't really kind of celebrate all these achievements, like these little victories we have along the way and little goals we've reached and stuff like that. So I thought it would be nice to to buy myself some art materials, but I wanted to treat myself to things that I wouldn't normally buy. So basically that's when I decided that I would order drawing materials. And this sketchbook, which I had bought back in the autumn, I think it was, um, and I'd been too scared to use it, I thought I'm going to start using this sketchbook. I'm going to get the drawing materials. I signed up to Emma Carlyle Sketchbook Club. And so, yeah, I'm basically, well, this is my treat to myself for reaching 100,000 followers. Now, what can we do next? Is there a colour? Well, I haven't used white, but it's a bit difficult on, well, I don't know. Let's just have a go. Have a go at the white here. If we add some, is it gonna show up? This is the thing. I'd be interested to see how this white pencil shows up on say like the, if we had um, darker paint underneath and I use the white pencil to add, um, to add detail. Yeah, we can kind of see it, can't we? I hope that's showing up on camera. It's quite interesting to see how things layer. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. 
Right, I'm going to, I think, take this dark sepia again and let's put in some little patterns in here. If any of you are drawing along with me while I'm doing this, what are you drawing? I'd love to know. Are you liking it? <laughs> Is it fun? Is it going well? Are you just playing around like I am or are you actually drawing something in particular? Now, I want to do something. What can I do? I'm going to add, I know, let's put some of these little V shapes here. I love a bit of pattern. If you know my paintings, you'll, <laughs> you'll see in many of them, there's always like detail and pattern. I like to keep things fairly simple in many ways, but then I add these little areas of, um, of detail. This is rather nice. I like this uh, dark sepia one. I think I would say the softness of the pencil, or the hardness of the pencil, seems to vary a little bit from colour to colour. Is that normal for coloured pencils, those of you who use them? I guess it is, because the pigments would make a difference, wouldn't they? But this one in particular is really, I can get more of a point to this for some reason. Oops. Let's kind of swoop them round bring this down a bit. I hope I'm still in shot. It's a bit hard to tell. <laughs> I keep moving up and up and up or I go down and down and down and go out of shot. You have to forgive me if that happens a bit because <laughs> I can't really see very well. I mean I set it up beforehand but if I move it becomes difficult to see. Right. else could we do? I might just do a little bit of cross hatching down here. Oh, this is so lovely and smooth, this pencil. By the way, have you got any recommendations, any of you, for sketchbooks? Like I say, I'm using a moleskin sketchbook, um, which I really love. However, they are a little bit pricey, so I would be interested to know whether any of you can recommend other sketchbooks. Which ones do you like? I mean, I need something that's going to be okay for like a variety of things, including paint, because I will be wanting to paint in these sketchbooks as well as draw. So the pages need to be, I mean, this paper is relatively thick. I haven't done much in the way of painting. I mean, I did a little bit. Let's see if I can find it for you. A little bit of swatching here. Um, this was just a color palette for a series of paintings that I'm thinking of doing that are gonna be based on the Suffolk coastline. So I was kind of working out my color palette. Um, and it seems to have taken to the paper okay, but obviously they're just small swatches, so we will see. Okay, I'm gonna do a few little leaf shapes. I do find this so relaxing to do. There's something lovely about drawing with no expectation. Because pretty much whenever I draw, it's always with an end result in mind. And it's lovely to just do it so 
I mean, would you call this intuitively? I suppose you would, wouldn't you? Right, I'm going to add a little bit of like misty. Sorry, I think I'm shaking the camera again, which is a little bit annoying for you. But it's hard to do this and not shake the table a little bit. Let's see if I go a bit firmer. It gets a little bit darker. Very pale grey though. Beautiful colour. I wouldn't mind um, having some walls this colour actually. At the moment I'm thinking about um, decorating, well it needs complete um, redecoration. At the moment it's um, a room that we use to <laughs> just dump everything else in while we're decorating elsewhere. But it is going to be my little office room. So it's a room that's just off the studio, it's very small and um, it's a lovely little room though. It has an original Victorian cupboard in there so that will be great for storing my packaging materials and and things like that um, but I'm thinking about kind of using a lovely sort of pale bluish grey on the walls in there because I think it will look be really calming and it's quite a small and quite a dark room as well so I think it needs something quite light on the walls I think something that's not far off the colour I'm using here can actually be um, really nice. But I can't wait to show you that. It's like when I've got a bit of time I'm going to be um, renovating that room and I'm going to share it on the, on the vlog so you'll get to see what I'm up to. But I've bought... Um, some nice things for that room they're just kind of in storage at the moment because I, I buy things when I see them like if they're on offer somewhere or it's something unusual I'll get it when I see it and um, and just kind of put it away so that I've got it ready for when I do the room but I bought some nice pieces um, I got a lovely rug the other week from Habitat and it was the most amazing price. I think it was, there was supposed to be 80 pounds and I managed to get it, I think it was in their sale. Or was did it already have money off? I think it already had some money off and then they had an extra sale price on top of that. So it was something like, it should have been 80 pounds and I got it for, I think it was 38 or something absolutely beautiful rug and I think it'll be perfect for the office so I can't I'm really excited to put this office together I think it's going to be such a lovely little room and I can't wait to show you it's going to be such a it needs a lot doing to it so there'll be kind of like a drastic difference at the end which is quite nice for a vlog isn't it it's nice to see something change quite dramatically right um do we want to do anything else I know I meant to just be playing around so I kind of feel like this bit needs something you see I'm already looking at it like a painting aren't I I'm trying to make it feel right I know what we'll do let's add a few of these little guys in here I think we're gonna say that this will be it for today it's been really fun again I just love doing this shall we leave it there just a fun little exercise you never know how they're gonna turn out anyway thank you for watching and for keeping me company while I worked on this um, I'm going to be recording more of these in the future. I want to actually work on some, um, should we say, more recognisable artwork that's kind of more in my usual style. So these are just little exercises where I'm trying things out, but I'm going to be working on 
um, some some actual I don't know whether to call them proper pieces that sounds like a weird thing to say but you know what I mean anyway I hope you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up if you did thumbs up <laughs> and um, I'll be back soon with another video take care of yourselves and stay creative <laughs>